Thank you for tuning in. You're watching The Property Guide on ET. Now, this is your one-stop shop to all the information you need when you're buying property in the country. Now, off late, when I look at my inbox, it's full of questions about Bangalore. And as much as we try to work through those questions, we keep getting more and more questions about buying property in Bangalore. This week, we've decided to do an entire special end-to-end -end about Bangalore. What we'll try and do is we'll discuss the top investment locations, we'll tell you the future prospects of these locations, and we'll give you recommendations in each neighborhood. That way, we'll try and answer as many of your questions as we can. But if we don't manage to do that, Write to us, our in, uh, email ID is at the bottom of your screen. You can send in any question you have about buying property and you can reach me on Twitter. Now, in order to do justice to our Bangalore special, I have a great lineup of guests. Oma Huja, CEO of Residential Services at JLL India. Naveen Nadwani is the Executive Director of Kushman and Wakefield, joins us from Bangalore. Jashi Kurup, Head of Content and Research at MagicBricks.com, joins us from Delhi. All of you, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to first bring in my colleague, Avan, who's going to give us an update on how prices have moved in various locations in Bangalore. Avan, take us through it. Thanks, Faye. Well, residential prices across key locations in Bangalore have shown a steady increase in the last two years. Let's take a look at the key emerging locations in east of Bangalore first. Whitefield has seen prices increase by 5% in the last two years. Homes here now cost an average of 4,675 rupees per square foot. Electronic City, which is one of the largest industrial parks in the country, is only just beginning to find its feet as a residential market. The prices of homes here have more than doubled over the last two years. Residential property here is trading at an average of 3,375 rupees a square foot. In the southeast of Bangalore, the fast developing location of Sarjapur Road has seen prices go up by 7% in the last two years. So the houses here are quoting at 4,225 rupees a square foot. Turning our attention to the south of Bangalore, Kanakapura Road has seen a price increase of 32% in the last two years. Homes here are quoting at an average of 4,425 rupees a square foot, and the uptrend in prices is expected to continue with a metro being constructed near this location. HSR layout has seen a price increase of 8% in the last two years. The prices here stand at 4,600 rupees a square foot currently compared to 4,250 rupees a square foot in 2012. Banargatta Road has seen the slowest movement in prices in the last two years out of all these locations. Residential prices here have increased by a mere 4% in the last two years. You can buy a home here at 3,950 rupees a square foot. With that, it's back to you, Faye. All right, Avan, thank you for that update. I want to start by first talking about East Bangalore, Whitefield, Martali, Electronic City, Sarjapur Road. Oh, we've talked about it several times. We talked about the fact that this is the concentration of the new talent that's moving into the city, which means that these are the people who are going to want to rent, these are the people who are going to want to buy. We know there are bottlenecks. We know there's problems right now still with water, still with electricity, still with roads and bottlenecks and uh, you know traffic. What is the future prospects of these neighborhoods? And if I were to ask you to choose between Sarjapur Road, between Whitefield, Marthali, and those neighborhoods, which ones would you? Which one would you pick? Well, I would say uh, there may be a lot of issues which you may be uh, sensing at this point of time in terms of when you look at a look and speak to a local Bangaloreite, he may say that there is so and so problem, so and so problem. But the way we see is we are looking at Bangalore as an opportunity when it comes to when you compare it to any other city in India. There is a lot more employment there, a lot more new jobs getting created there, a lot more action in terms of corporates expanding there. So what we see is every new job which is getting created in Bangalore is basically going to look for an apartment to start with in a leasing terms and eventually going to look at in terms of buying terms. Mm -hmm. The focus area in Bangalore today, which is actually looking to be much more in a robust phase, is the East Bangalore, where you see a lot more people in from Sajapur Road to Whitefield are looking at basically looking at buying the first apartment. This doesn't come into the luxury segment. This certainly comes into the budget segment. So in a Bangalore, what does budget mean? Is it 40 to 60 lakh? It starts anywhere between 40 lakhs, goes up to one and a half crore. Even that is considered to be a budget in terms of Bangalore because one, till one and a half crore, you can get a decent three bedroom hall kitchen in an area ranging from Shajapur Road. And you may go into Whitefield with a decent developer name, great 
uh, amenities built in there. It can go up to anywhere between one to one and a half crore. Mm -hmm. So this is a segment which looks very uh, very appealing at this point of time. And then you have Whitefield, which is one of the locations where luxury has been redefined in India in all sense because there is a lot more development happening there. But there are specific developers like Total Environment, there are specific developers like Chaitanya who have created that kind of aura or a product which is not available in any other part of India. All right, Jashi, come in here. When you look at what's happening on the website right now, people are running searches on Bangalore. Is it true then? Are you seeing the same thing happen as we see in our inbox? Is there more demand right now for Bangalore? And within Bangalore, are you seeing more demand for Whitefield and Sarjapur Road? Tell us what bracket you're seeing that demand in. Fave Bangalore comes second. Actually, on the website, we find Mumbai right on top as the top searched area. And then comes Bangalore as a close second. And when you look at Bangalore, I think while we do uh, believe that manufacturing uh, is a direction that the government is moving in, and you know that is the second driver that the government is looking for, currently, uh, at least over the last uh, three, four quarters, it has been IT which has been driving the uh, demand in Bangalore. And if you look at uh, the IT demand, like you said, Whitefield, uh, Electronic City, Sarjapur Road. These are the areas where uh, there is a, a significant amount of end-user demand. And like Om said, it is, it is the people who are living and working there who would like to uh, stay closer to their workplace, not have to travel too much. Uh, whatever the problems may be with water, transport, travel and so on, I think the proximity to the IT corridor is actually what is driving here. And 40 to 60 lakh, very, very strong budget. A very, very strong bracket where we are seeing a lot of demand. Uh, but, uh, but the uh, one to one and a half uh, crore is also a very strong uh, in-demand uh, budget. Uh, we also see a couple of things here. Uh, Despite all the problems, I think electronic city is one where people, uh, a lot of people are looking at um, budget housing. The budgets are slightly lower in electronic city and you're still in that IT, uh, uh, you know, hub, so to speak. Uh, you are also seeing, um, I think, some, uh, some amount of uh, budget demand. Uh, even on the Sarjapur road side, there are, uh, there are uh, some apartments which are available in the 40 to 60 lakh and people are uh, looking for those those properties. So I would say that uh, it is end user demand, it is people who are working in the IT corridors and it is also uh, people who have specific budgets and they start with a budget and then they see what all is available in that, within that budget. Naveen, I'm going to bring you in here. If I'm not mistaken, Whitefield, apart from what it's seeing right now and all of the things that Jayashri mentioned, we'll see an extension of the metro line all the way to Whitefield. We're also looking at the outer ring road. There's a peripheral ring road, which is an eight-lane road that will connect Whitefield to other parts of the city. Tell us what sort of growth in capital values you are expecting to see in Whitefield, let's say, in the next five years or so. Okay, so first I'll, first I'll address the infrastructure developments that the government is talking about. Or it's, it's all over the press or the statements these guys have made. So, you know, coming specifically to Whitefield, one of the projects that, they, that they've proposed and which will increase the connectivity and hopefully lessen the travel time is actually a signal-free corridor from, from very close to the CBD right up to Whitefield. So that, I'm sure, will continue to fuel the growth in Whitefield over the long run, over the next five to ten years. I would see Whitefield capital uh, market appreciation, capital rates appreciation by about 10 to 15 percent at least. All right, 10 to 15 percent. And what are you noticing on the ground right now, since you're our expert coming in from Bangalore? Where do you see the most uh, demand? And of the people who are coming to you to look to buy homes, how many of them are looking for, you know, the brand new homes with the, the you know, the whole gated community, the swimming pool, things like that? Is that where the demand lies right now in Bangalore? See, the demand, uh, I mean, the demand that we are seeing is primarily from one only from I mean from end users and in terms in terms of what they're looking at they're looking at newer projects where you, where you know where they have amenities built in and as well as you know will address all the security concerns because you know all these gated communities or condominiums that, that are getting developed are actually have all these amenities and security built in so yes the demand mainly we see from end users and it's more towards apartments and in locations like Whitefield, Sharjapur Road, the other locations that that actually catching the eye now is Tani Sandra, Henur Road, because of that accessibility to, you know, to workplace. All right, so if you're looking to buy a home in any of the locations we discussed, here are some options that you can consider. 
For those of you looking to invest at Electronic City, here are a few options. Heritage by Radiant Structures. Aisha by Aswani Properties. Metropolis Electra by Metropolis Properties. And Skyline by The Splendid Group. For those of you who are considering Sarjapur, here are a few options. Vaswani Reserve by Vaswani Group. GR Sankalpa by GR Constructions. And Passion Elite by ND Developers. For those of you who are looking to invest in Whitefield, here are a few options. Skylark Ithika by Skylark. Indraprastha Ruhe by Indraprastha Shelters. And Gopalan Atlantis by Gopalan Enterprises. Right, questions about Bangalore. Sudhir has written in he wants to buy an apartment in Ramki 1 North Yalahanka in Bangalore. What is the future prospect of this location and the project? Uh, Jayashree, do you want to just take us through the project? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you look at this project, the Ramki group, uh, roughly about 3,800 uh, uh, per square foot is the range and you're getting about 700 to about 1,300 square feet uh, in a budget of about 28 to 53 uh, lakhs. You don't have to worry about the developer. Ramki is a uh, reliable developer here. Um, it, we also saw that, you know, the last two years, if you look at this uh, area, Yalahanka, you're seeing about a 23% rise in values. But over the last one year, there has been a very nominal rise. So what has happened is, in, uh, you know, when the base was very slow, very low, you saw a uh, significant rise in values. And now it's kind of stable. And when it reaches the stages where the uh, uh, rental demand rises, that's when you're going to see more, uh, you know, significant growth in uh, values. So this is how we have seen it. And uh, there is a proposed development of the metro rail and a peripheral ring road. So there, uh, you know, these are these are markets which are going to benefit from that. All right. I'm going to ask the next question because it's almost the same neighborhood. Well, uh, Kanushk has written in he wants to buy an apartment in Bangalore as an investment budget of 60 to 70 lakh rupees. He'd also be able wants to be able to rent out the property over the next two to four years. Now, he has two options, Hiranandani's Kalveri in Devanahalli and Prestige Temple Bells, which is in Rajeshwari Nagar. What is your advice? Now, if we talk about Yalahanka and Devanahalli in that stretch, there's so much construction happening right now. And it's where a lot of builders are now focusing their energy. Would you would it make sense for him to look at that neighborhood as an investment? If I would look at uh, if I read the requirement very carefully, it says that you know in two to three years, four years time, he needs to look at rental income from this project. I would say at this point of time, uh, one should restrict in terms of keeping that in mind, outer ring road specifically, or Sajapur Road, that is an area where it's very easy to lease your apartment. And very important that, you know, you, one needs to be very careful when you're picking up something. It shouldn't happen that you are caught in a segment where you have too much of supply and you don't have uh, tenants for it. So I would rather restrict myself to the outer ring road and Sajapur Road. Also, if you're looking at rental return, then it makes sense to look at something that's near completion as well. Now, Naveen, I want to bring you in here. He's asking us to choose between Rajeshwari Nagar and Devanahalli. If you were to choose between the two, what would you recommend? From, from a medium term perspective, I would think Rajeshwari Nagar, because it's, it's more established. Uh, Devanahalli is, again, is a futuristic location, would be developed in the next four to five years. And if he's looking at a rental income, you know, I mean, rental income perspective, uh, I, would, I would prefer the Rajeshwari Nagar. All right, we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to the south of Bangalore. We'll tell you what the investment options are there. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Guide on ET Now. Thank you for staying with us. All of our experts are still with us. We're focusing on the city of Bangalore. We're now going to talk about HSR Road and Banargata Road along with Kanakpura Road now in the south. We remember that all of this used to be outside of the city, but now it's become a bustling hub and it's a great location for both commercial and residential property. I want to bring Naveen in here. Naveen joins us from Bangalore. Tell us what sort of construction you're witnessing in that area right now, Naveen. From, from a, from, uh, I'll address it in two bits. From a, from a commercial perspective, there's a lot of, there is continuous demand for office space in, in, in the Banargata uh, uh, area and the surrounding areas, which means that this is fueling, fueling demand for residential. Hence, there's a lot of projects that are currently getting built, up, built out. As you had mentioned, that these areas which you know which used to be earlier you know out, uh, outside the city are now considered within city limits 
and hence there is a lot of residential development, there's a lot of demand for rental accommodation in these locations. Jayashree, what sort of action are you seeing on the website when it comes to these three neighborhoods, Kanakpura Road, Banargata Road? Is, you know, are they uh, enough, is there enough supply right now to tackle the kind of demand we're seeing? See, Fabi, I went and checked out uh, these areas vis-a-vis uh, -vis the demand and supply. In terms of demand, it is right up there. Banargata Road and uh, Kanakpura Road are both in our top uh, 10 uh, searched uh, locations. And when I look at supply, both Banargata Road and Kanakpura Road are right there. Uh, roughly, you're, get, you're seeing a rise in prices here, uh, you know, consistent about 15 uh, to 20% rise over the years in uh, Banargata Road and Kanakpura Road, we've seen the, the demand has been more recent and I've seen a lot of demand there. So in terms of demand and supply and uh, as uh, you know, even the rental um, demand is quite significant in Banergata Road. So uh, yeah, one of the reasons we have been querying our users, asking why they're looking for these areas, and one of the things that has come up is that it is very green, and this seems to be a big uh, issue with a lot of buyers. They're looking at Banergata Road and Kanakpura Road because of the greenery around, and they feel it's a very, very livable part of the city. I mean, I want to bring you in here very quickly when we're talking about this green, beautiful part of the city, a little bit of old Bangalore perhaps that's still remaining in that city. Tell us what sort of capital value appreciation you expect in these neighborhoods going forward? I would, I would think in the range of about 15 to 18 percent going, uh, you know, over the next one or two years. And, I, and if an infrastructure project that is planned by the government of having an elevated road very close to Banargata Road, you know, to ease traffic, I think that will increase the demand. All right. And remember, of course, Banarata Road will also get an extension of the metro line. When that does happen, it will connect that entire part of the city to the center of the city. If you're looking to buy a home in these locations that we just discussed, here are some options for you. For those of you who are looking to invest at Banargata Road, here are a few options. Sumukha Kalpavruksha by Sumukha Constructions. Lotus Petals by Lotus Developers. Arvind Soparneka by Arvind Builders. For those of you who are considering Kanakpura Road, here are a few options. Mantri Royal by Mantri Realty. Harvijay Heights by Vijay Enterprises. And Century Central by Century Real Estate. I will quickly try and answer some questions. Ishfaq is written in, he's planning to buy property purely for an investment in Baneswadi in Bangalore with a budget of 50 lakh rupees. Please advise me on a project and future prospects of uh, locations. Well, Baneswadi does get a lot of spillover action from Hinur and the outer ring road that connects it to all of the neighborhoods we just talked about. But as an investment, would you say 50 lakh rupees Baneswadi is the best choice? Well, we actually saw that not uh, great developments in Baneswadi at this point of time which come to in our radar at this point of time. And we think, you know, the budget is little for the... He, 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 Ishfaq will have to ex extend to Hanur, Hanur side, that's, that's where he will find some options there. And he'll have to a little bit extend his budget in terms of 50 to 70 odd lakhs to find good options there. But Jashi, obviously there aren't enough uh, national developers in Banaspadi, there aren't any at all in fact. But if he wants to still buy within that budget, he can find a couple of the smaller developers, the one plus four type of buildings. Would you recommend he goes in for one of those instead? Yes, actually on uh, on the website when I check, I do find that they are smaller developers, local developers, but you're seeing uh, a lot of uh, uh, property that is available in Banaswadi in this 50 lakh, roughly about 3,800 to 4,600 per square foot, but these are not the uh, big city developers, these are small local developers. Also the size that will be available to you is about 1,100 to about 1,350 uh, square feet you would get in this budget. But and in, in this area, there is a rental return of... Uh, uh, something around 17,000 to about 25,000 per month. That is the rental return. So he can look at this, but remember that these are small local developers. All right, so there are options out there, but you know, Om telling you if you're looking to make a sharp investment, it might make more sense to consider, consider Hennu Road. You might have to bump up your budget a little bit. We have another question. This one's more open ended from Pradeep Kumar. He's planning on buying a two or a three bedroom home in East Bangalore within city limits with a budget of 45 lakh rupees. You want some information about prevailing rates in the area and projects. Naveen, I want to come to you with this. With a budget of 45 lakh rupees within city limits, Bangalore East, is that possible? Yeah, it, it's possible in the Whitefield location, but not very close to the city. So it's, it's towards the, you know, the, uh, 
the further part of Whitefield. There are some projects that he could look at, which is Skylark Ithika, Regal Prelude, Asset Mark, VHBC, and uh, even even Republic of Whitefield. And this he would probably get it in the four to six thousand rupees a square feet uh, range. All right, before we wrap up this show, I do want to ask each of you for one piece of advice for someone who's buying in Bangalore right now. And we've said water, water, water several times on this show. But other than the fact that, you know, water is of paramount importance, would you have one piece of advice for someone who's looking to invest in Bangalore as a market? But I would say Bangalore, uh, look at zone where you are very close to your office rather than, you know, going to areas which are very futuristic. And specifically when it comes to North Bangalore, which I still feel uh, the major challenge is water there. And the second major challenge which I see at this point of time is the kind of prices which have run up. I, I fail to digest how the prices will justify to be at these levels. Mm -hmm. But I guess there are, there are a lot more other parts of Bangalore which still give you value. And there's a lot more value buying and can do in. All right. Uh, Naveen, do you have some advice for uh, viewers who are looking to invest in Bangalore? See, uh, the advice is basically look at, look at projects in, you know, in, in locations where there, are, where there, is, where there is focus from, from the government to do infrastructure because those actually give a cue for corridors of growth. I would, I would advise people to look at locations like, like you know, uh, uh, Sandra, which is North Bangalore, but more accessible, to, you know, to the workplaces. So these are such locations, and I think it's, it's, it's a good investment if, you know, if they choose a product that, that is not very futuristic, in a, in a, in a futuristic location. Jashree, same question. Uh, transport corridors. A city like Bangalore, which is developing in every uh, direction, uh, one, uh, do look at places which are near. If you're buying as an end user, it should be near your office uh, area. If, if you're buying as an investor, it should be close to some economic corridor where there is a strong uh, driver, economic driver, uh, so that you get a, a, some kind of rental returns. Another thing is that do check because the government has been regularly announcing what kind of uh, transport corridors are coming up. And I've noticed that whatever price rises or uh, price variations have happened in the Bangalore market over the last few years has been on the back of some infrastructure, transport infrastructure coming in and making it a little easier to uh, travel to wherever you have to travel to. So I would say uh, track the infrastructure and uh, buy along those corridors. All right, so that's the advice you're getting. Of course, Bangalore is a hot market. We give you a list of projects. We give you a list of neighborhoods. But remember to be close to workspaces so you can find rental uh, customers. And, of course, keep an eye out for all infrastructure developments. That's a wrap on the Property Guide. Thank you so much, Om, Naveen, and Jashree, for joining us and answering our questions. All right, before we wrap up this show, global real estate tycoon Donald Trump was in India to launch his first project in Mumbai, Trump Towers at the Park. My colleague Ritu Jindal caught up with him to talk to him about the potential that he sees in India's real estate market. Take a look. Uh, this is one of your first tie-ups in India, Max, your entry here, really. What really attracted you to the Lodha brand and this particular project, if you could elaborate? Well, the Lodha brand is known all over. These are great developers, talented developers. So when we had the opportunity to come to India, and in this case, Mumbai specifically, right. we chose it. And a lot of that had to do with Lodha. Uh, a lot of it has to do with India. Your new prime minister is doing a spectacular job in terms of outside of India. Uh, the respect that he's gendered is is really been great. So uh, we have the opportunity to work with another great developer, and uh, we chose Lota, and, and we're very happy about it. Mr. Trump, this is just a tie-up uh, in terms of brand. There is no real financial investment here. Uh, why haven't we seen that happen yet? Well, uh, we actually think there will be. You know, India is very strong in terms of its laws and rules and regulations as right. to an investment. Uh, but we are looking at doing that because we feel so strongly about not only my partner and my the developer, but the development itself. We feel it's so good, and mm. we are looking to do. We do have rules and regulations in India that are different from most countries. In the United States, they welcome investment. In India, they're very careful about it. Right. And I'm not saying right or wrong because it might be a good thing, frankly. I mean, sometimes in the United States, I disagree with that very strongly. But uh, they do have rules and regulations. But we are looking to make a substantial investment. You know, you've gone on record to say that India, the real estate market here, will be one of your top three uh, markets globally. But so far, all we've seen is two tie-ups. What is the game plan from here on? Which cities are you looking at? What kind of investments are you planning? Well, you know, two tie-ups is a lot of tie-ups. That's a lot of uh, mm -hmm. 
really it's two very important jobs, two great jobs, and the one in Mumbai is a very big one. So I don't like to go too fast. You know, I, I really stress quality over quantity. I could do 100. I turn down so many jobs because I don't want to do them. And, mm. You know, we're in a very lucky position in life. I have a private company. It's a very massive company, and it's a very successful company. I do what I want to do. And in this case, and with Loda and with Mumbai and the project itself, we're just excited about it. So, you know, we could do many, many projects in India and elsewhere, but we just don't choose to do that. We want to do very good ones. I really, I think it's important to say quality is much more important to me than quantity.